We have seen the theory part about PG Badger. How to configure it and use it. You can clone the PG Badger repo like this onto your server. And then once you clone the PG Badger repo, you can start using it. Some of the things you need to consider when using PG Badger is log line prefix. Check your log line prefix and here are some examples that are compatible with PG Badger. And depending on your log line prefix, you may need to alter your PG Badger command. I just gave some examples here. With sturdier log format, you have at least this. And then if we add user, database name, application name, client IP, it should be something like this. And here are two more formats. Basically, check your log line prefix. Sometimes when you run PG Badger and you may not see the desired output, you may need to add log line prefix as your parameter to PG Badger command. Now, let's go ahead and do a demo. Basically, I already downloaded the PG Badger. You can clone the repo like I showed you before. Once that is done, let's see the command that you can run, okay? Let's check that out. Basically, this command, the PG Badger, and you need to give the path of the Postgres log. Here, I will run this. Now, in it's going to do the passing and you can see the progress. If it is a really big file, it will take some time. And then it said, okay, generating HTML report by default it's going to generate in HTML format. And we didn't give any output file. We just gave the PG Badger and then the Postgres log file location. If you don't give the output file it's going to generate out dot html and this is similar to the one i showed you in the previous class where we get all the graphs for the slow queries waiting queries and vacuum reports and all the dashboards once you open this html file in the browser you will see all those graphs by default if you don't specify anything or any file it's going to generate like this but it's always better to specify using minus O option and then give PG Badger mart rep dot HTML dot. If you give something like this, it's going to use this file name rather than the default out dot HTML. It's always good to give that file name. Okay. Now that you see that it's generated, you can open this in your browser to see all the graphs. Let's see some of the options you have. The second command I would like to show you is using minus J option. Here we're using the minus J option and gave eight. If you have a 10 gigabyte file or a large file that you want to enhance the speed of passing, you can give the parallelism option, like depending on the number of CPUs. You can give eight or six or whatever. This is going to speed up the passing. All right, so remember that. The third one I'm going to show you here is generating text format. Sometimes you don't want to see the graphical format. You just want to see the text format. Let's see how that works. Now here, I'm going to save it PG Badger March report dot txt. If you notice, I'm using txt and not html. It's done. It should have generated this one. You can open the text report and you can see all the stats. So let's look at that. Instead of the graphical report, this is what you get. It's kind of text report and you can see all the queries are mostly selected. Then the slowest queries. 
these are the slowest queries and then you can see the ranking here basically by default it gives up to 20 queries and you can change the limit also by adding an option to give more sometimes text format is helpful you don't want to generate html format and you want to just use the text format you can do that and then basically the fourth the fourth one I'm going to show you is option minus B and minus C minus B means beginning time period and minus C is end time period. Let's say you want to only get a report for a specific period of time. In this case, I want from this time, which is 2022 January 25th at 1056 to 1059. I only want a report for this particular time because I, let's say there's a production incident. Suddenly the app slowed down between this time and you're not concerned about other times. You just want to have the report for these times. You can specify that using these options and then go through the output and try to troubleshoot the issue. These are some of the options. There are more options, but these are a good start. And as you can see, PG Badger is really helpful in troubleshooting Postgres issues. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.